Hey everyone. Today I wanted to talk to you about the biggest impediment to achieving a state of happy flow, of enjoying what we're doing, and enjoying it without that kind of dissonant feeling that we maybe should be doing something else, it isn't quite right, it's somehow not good enough. Something that I've felt is so pervasive in how I've approached work and how I've approached life up until very recently. And so here's what I've learned. One of the biggest issues, and this is something that we can really see across society, it generalizes really well, is the idea that we've put our brains in charge. We've decided that they are the judge and the jury. And so whatever our brain says is what we're going to decide to go with. Now, like, of course, we would go with what our brain says, right? Who does the opposite of what their brain says? And the real answer there is everyone. Everyone almost does the opposite of what their brain says. Uh, whether your brain says you should go work out and you're not. Whether your brain says don't eat that piece of cake and you're like, ah, I'm going to eat it anyways. Or your brain says, hey, let's go to bed now because you really need sleep. And you go, yeah, but I'm just going to just going to watch this video. I'm just going to do this, you know, this one last thing. So we're not really listening to our brains, not all the time, right? They're valuable. Um, they're rational. And so we kind of figure that anything we do, whatever we feel, whatever we want, it has to pass the rational test, right? Like if I feel angry, but there's no good reason to feel angry, then I shouldn't feel angry. So I won't. That, that doesn't really work, but that's, that's how we try to do things, right? Um, I want security, so I'm going to pursue this career path. I don't really like the job right now. I don't really want to do the job right now, but, but I want to get there. I want this future thing, so I should do this. But let me give a, a really more pertinent example that I've been playing with a lot lately is, let's say I'm in a course online, and I am. And let's say I want to connect with someone from that course. In the past, I would think, what should I say? How do I explain to them why I want to connect with them? Why do I want to connect with them? How do I explain it to myself? How do I motivate myself to want to connect with them? Because I might get rejected. I have to reach out. I have all this resistance. And so even, even motivating me, right, from my rational brain saying, oh, like, why... What's going to make me reach out to them, right? So I can do all that, and then I can reach out to the person. I can say, hey, I want to reach out to you because of this and this, and I thought you'd enjoy chatting with me for this reason, and so, so do you want to talk? And you'll notice inherently there, I'm making a pitch, right? I'm saying, like, here are the reasons why you'll want to do this thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm basically trying to convince you. And if I'm trying to convince you, then there are inherently reasons why you wouldn't want to do it. And I know that. So I need to convince you. And if my brain needs to convince myself, then there are inherently reasons why it thinks I don't want to do it or why maybe I don't want to do it. And so I even need to convince myself and pitch myself to get myself up over that hump. And then I'll pitch you using the same kind of internal logic. And that's great. That took a lot of energy. There was resistance. There was a lot of thinking. There was a lot of justifying the value of connecting with me. Um, and there's a lot of subtler messaging in that I won't dive into now, but maybe you're picking up on some of it. What else could I do? If I want to meet someone, right? Why do I want to meet them? Um, I, I have reasons, right? Like sometimes I pick up a book and it's about one topic and I want to read about that topic and I read the book and I realize, holy crap, there are six topics in this that I've just read about. They're all interesting. I didn't know this was going to connect all of them, but somehow I knew that I wanted to read this book and wow, look at all this unseen benefit. I just, I must have intuited it somehow. I won't, I don't know how it doesn't matter, but look, hey, I have a good track record, right? So if I want to talk to a person and meet them, then there's probably a good reason. 
And I feel I need to understand that reason. I feel it needs to be rationalized and justified or else how am I going to convince them? How am I going to convince myself? If I need to convince myself, it's because I don't just do what I feel I want to do. I need to think it through first. I need to judge it. I need to evaluate it. I need to make sure it's safe and makes sense and, and the risk reward. And, and so again, lots of energy. I did a little experiment this week. I sent a message to a few people that I felt I wanted to connect with. I didn't know why in all of the situations, but I knew I wanted to. And I said to them, hey, I want to meet you. Do you want to have a Zoom call? So that had 100% success, right? Now, these are people who I'm in a course with. And so they've posted, I've posted, we've seen what, you know, um, we've seen what we've all written. And if what I've written and expressed and who I've showed myself to be resonates with them, then great, they're going to want to talk to me. And if not, they won't. That's cool. They'll filter and I'll filter. It's just so much easier. I can just simply say, I want this. No justifying, no rationalizing, no real energy. And if I say no, I accept that. That's fine. That's fine. I feel empowered for exactly that reason. I'm going to pursue my want. And I'm going to accept the consequence of that, whether it's a little bit painful or whether it's pleasant. And I can move on. There's no convincing. There's no tug of war. There's no internal dialogue. There's no judging my own wants. There's no rationalizing. There's just acting on how I feel. And there's something absolutely beautiful about that. So what I want to ask you, what wants do you have that you've been justifying rather than simply pursuing? What would happen if instead of thinking about it and deciding if it's valid and running it through your rational filter, what if you realized that mostly you're not as rational as you think and no one is? That we're all emotionally driven anyways? What would happen if you just followed your wants, even if you don't know why you want those things? What if you didn't need to know how you felt or why you felt that way, but simply followed the pull, followed the direction? What if you didn't know the end result in advance and you just did things? How would your life change? The last thing I want to talk about is the chat that I had with Joe, the teacher, of the Art of Accomplishment course, which I've been speaking about in so many of my newsletters. There's something a bit magical about Joe, and I think so many of us have been trying to deconstruct and rationalize it ourselves. I won't get too far into that, but he does seem to have a way of speaking past our intellects and into our emotional and intuitive centers. And so I had a conversation with Joe, and he led me to a little bit of a breakthrough, and I had no idea what that breakthrough was, but I felt it. And now, five weeks later, I think what happened is Joe proved to me that I could know something without knowing it intellectually. Joe proved to me that I could find something funny. I could feel how hilarious something is. I could just laugh about it until my eyes watered. And yet my rational mind could have absolutely no idea why it was funny. It still doesn't. It still makes me chuckle. I won't tell you the joke here because it wouldn't be funny. It just doesn't really make sense. He kind of took a belief of mine and fed it back to me as a question, and that just cracked me right up. But more importantly, he showed me that my mind doesn't understand everything. And that the things that my mind doesn't understand can still be very, very real. And so with that, I'll ask you again. 
How would your life change if you pursued the emotions that you're having and the wants that are driving you without worrying about where they're taking you or what is underneath you wanting them? What if your brain was an advisor, but not the manager, not the decision maker? How would life change?